Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Staying Social During Social Distancing. Today's presentation will last for approximately 20 minutes followed by a 15 minute question and answer session. Our presenter is Randy Boyette, the founder of Spark, Mark Spark Medical Marketing Inc. Spark is a digital marketing firm that helps tech medical and aesthetic brands into the digital marketing space with a team of experts. Businesses have grown exponentially as a result of the Spark Marketing Digital Formula for Success. Randy has had many years in sales and marketing and saw the industry taking a strong turn to digital marketing and saw an opportunity to immerse herself and take the company in this direction. Randy's breadth of experience include roles as Director of Sales and Marketing with leading brands such as Christian Dior, Chanel, Mac, Hugo Boss, and Carolina Herrera. She has been an invited speaker all over North America on the topic of digital marketing and mentors new entrepreneurs and university students. Randy has built the Spark team to over 90 trained and certified digital experts over the last eight years. Together, they use their expertise to build strategy, which is customized for each client and monitor that program for optimal success. Their approach to digital marketing has caused a stir in the industry, which has raised the bar for, for expectations across the board. And I have seen this uh, um, work with a lot of our customers in the past, and I've seen that as an example. And you know, we at Latronic is very proud to have Randy and her team as our marketing partner. And at this time, I'm going to turn the session over to my friend, Randy Boyette. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this webinar today, brought to you by Lutronic and Spark Medical Marketing. The topic for today's webinar is staying social during social distancing. I am Randy Boyette, the founder of Spark Medical Marketing, and I will be your host today. Spark Medical Marketing is a full-service digital marketing agency dedicated only to working with medical and aesthetics practices throughout North America. With our team of over 90 experts and 1,200 customers, we partnered with Lutronic about two years ago to ensure their customer successes. Excited to bring to you this webinar today. So we're going to jump right in and start talking about staying social in social distancing times. Even though it might not be business as usual for quite some time, Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, there are a few shifts in marketing your medical and aesthetics practice that can positively lay the foundation for future business success. Message tones, current campaigns, and the effect that the pandemic has had on your industry should all be carefully considered before posting or sharing digital content. Here are some tips to navigating your marketing presence during COVID-19. You have two choices, worry and talk about coronavirus while endlessly scrolling social media and watching the news nonstop, or stay informed and safe and then look for opportunities to service your customers better than you ever have before. Thriving during a pandemic, can we do that? We believe you can. The beauty of social media during this pandemic is its ability to build camaraderie through digital platforms. A changing routine, different work settings, and social distancing have been tough for many, but there is a level of hopefulness in knowing that we will and can continue to communicate with each other with the help of the internet. The tone conveyed by businesses and individuals has varied, but it is important to remain optimistic while not making light of the situation while navigating your digital marketing presence during this time. While all businesses are not expected to provide their two cents on the virus, there is nothing wrong with posting or sharing messages on the pandemic secondary effects that you, have, that you do have expertise on. What tips or messages can your company share during this period of change and uncertainty? Don't just survive, consider ways to thrive. The desire for your services does not go away. This is a key point to remember. Customers are just more fearful to take action now. Businesses that will survive the coming months are the ones that will be spending their time in quarantine productively. This is your time to discover creative ways to serve customers through whatever may come. And while you are keeping things positive and leading the charge with your team, remember to take a deep breath and keep yourself motivated as well. 
This is a great opportunity to capture and dominate the market. This is a once-in-a-lifetime audience on social media right now, and we are advising you to take advantage of that. By developing a marketing strategy, you can, number one, take advantage of the, cell, of the space, Number two, put yourself in front of your competitor's patients. And number three, take a larger piece of the market share. This is a critical time, if you have not been active on social media, to get in front of everyone who is in your local area. We advise that you stay connected as much as possible during these times. The continuation of business during this unprecedented ordeal varies across the industries. This is affecting your business or industry overall, but be sure to share an announcements with your customers. This could mean pinning a banner to your website, sending out an email blast, or posting on social media platforms. Through email, you are able to contact your entire patient base about what you are doing to keep your patient safe, as well as any updates. You can do this through monthly newsletters, update office status, teleconsults, updated hours, policies, how to schedule a televisit, maybe offer mail order specials, and even health tips. You want to make sure that you are keeping your website relevant. Update your website and keep your audience informed. As to new hours or closi closings, your personal COVID-19 message, options for telehealth, maybe options for virtual aesthetics consults. You want to make sure at this time that you're paying attention to your website. How many times have you said that you want to update your website? Well, this is the greatest time. Update your content and your before and after images. Take advantage of the time that you may have on your hands. Optimizing your Google My Business listing is also a critical time for this. Make sure that you keep your updated office hours on Google My Business. You want to post to Google My Business about maybe any promotions that you're running or maybe you're featuring a, a specific uh, product or service that is relevant to the time. Also, ask for new reviews. People have more time on their hands to leave you a review. When is the last time you responded to all of your reviews? Check in and make sure you have. At this time, we also want to let you know that there are some delays from Google. So they are being, there is some heavy traffic here with people adjusting their hours and, and updates. So you may experience some delays from Google, but make sure to submit your requests and they will take care of them eventually. This is a perfect time to inject positivity into your patients' lives and build a stronger connection with them. If your doors are still open, Treat those patients that come into your clinic with VIP status. Slower times will give you the opportunity to pamper every patient that comes in and establish and build that relationship. Offer free products, special gifts, and even upgrade their treatments. If you're, what should you do if your office is temporarily closed? Well, it is recommended to, of course, update your Google My Business listing hours until your office returns to regular hours. You can also mark your location as temporarily closed through Google. On your website, you can add a temporary banner to the top of your homepage stating your office is currently closed due to COVID-19, and this banner can be removed at any time once your office reopens. You may want to consider forwarding your phone lines to make sure you don't lose any patients in the mix. You may also want to consider utilizing an answering service or a text messaging service to communicate with your patients. As I said earlier, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get your message across on social media. The key here is don't go silent. You know what people are going to be doing over these next couple of weeks while stuck at home? Scrolling. Scrolling on social media day and night. Entertain and educate people as they sit home on their phones. Continue to post on social media regularly. Produce treatment demonstration videos. Host a Facebook Live Q&A, a webinar, or share some at-home health tips. 
Education brings curiosity, and curiosity brings future consults. This is a great time to get creative. Send out creative offers that do not require people to come into your clinic. Conduct virtual or phone consultations. You will want to check with your state for regulations regarding telemedicine. Offer discounts if for prepay services. Consider offering a mobile delivery service. And look for ways to make your customers' lives easier. Video brings your business to life. Connect with your audience and let them know and see who you are. Here are six videos you should consider creating during this time. Update your office status. Talk about teleconsults, your new business hours, and policies. Why not do this on video? Talk about health tips on video. Give an office tour. Demonstration videos. Credentialing, talk about what your differentiators are and why your practice are the experts in the industry. Also, feature your success stories, testimonials, before and afters, what your treatments have done for the success of your practice. Let's talk about community engagement. There is no better time to show you are a team player than right now. If you are helping a cause, Show it on your social media channels. This will not only inspire others to help, but it will show your interest in the community outside of your business efforts. People want to work with a team player. Host a webinar event. Have you considered this in the past and thought, I just don't have time to do that right now? Well, now you do. And 73% of marketers say that a webinar is the best way to generate high-quality leads. People have the time to sit and learn and be captivated by your message. You can schedule an informative webinar about your most impactful revenue-generating services. You want to make sure you feature an interactive Q&A session during the webinar, share testimonials and before and after images, and offer one-on-one -on -one virtual or phone consultations. This initiative will allow you to build trust through education and demonstration, as well as integrity. You may have current ads running on Google or any other platforms. At this time, it is appropriate to recognize that certain campaigns should be paused. Perhaps you have scheduled a stellar email marketing campaign to alert customers of a new product or service that your, your business is offering. In these trying times, it is crucial to recognize that is it okay to hit the pause button during advertising non-urgent matters. Consider shifting your focus to ways that your service can help out current customers amid this crisis. So, what you may want to do here is update your call to action on your ads. Maybe update me regarding future specials, sign me up for updates. What you do want to do is avoid shutting down campaigns altogether. If you can, try to keep some campaigns running and keep your voice out there. This will prevent delays in reaching peak campaign performance due to disruptions and restarts. One of our next pieces of advice is to invest in your staff. As business owners, we don't always have the time to work with our team or coach our staff. This is a, the perfect opportunity to create a team of rock stars. Use this time to encourage staff education and keep them motivated. Focus on product knowledge, business training, certifications, or new techniques. If education cannot be done in the office, this is a time to turn to virtual conferences, FaceTime, or online education. Have you been working with a marketing agency for years? Strategize with them during this time. Use this pause as a chance to prepare yourself for future growth. Ask your marketing team to consult with you at this time about how you can come back into the market with a bang when the timing is right. If you don't have a marketing company, this may be a good time to research the right one for you. When was the last time you were able to really think about where you want to take your business? Develop creative promotions 
work on your online review strategy, perhaps consider using a service for online reviews, set goals for when your business is back to normal again, and create customer emails for future use. One of the most important takeaways from today is to think long-term. Focus on long-term brand building and your mission. Utilize marketing and promotions to build trust with customers and long-lasting relationships. Don't be tempted to use your marketing budget on short-term performance marketing and sales promotions at this time. Hot sales and deals will not stimulate a market that is currently unsure of their future and sometimes afraid to use, leave their homes. Stay positive. We know these are trying times for everyone in business right now, but this virus too shall pass. Patients will return to your office. Make sure to keep the spark of your brand light burning. The cost of turning off and going silent for the rest of 2020 and then trying to ignite your brand will only lead to greater costs for the following year. We want to leave you with this quote from Charles Darwin. Those who survive are not the strongest or the most intelligent, but the most adaptable to change. These changes are definitely a challenge, and we know that you are up to it. At Spark, we are here for you. We would love to have a consultation with you. If you would like, please visit our website at your leisure, and we would love to talk to you about your marketing or any other initiative you may have. Thank you for, again for taking the time today. This is Randy Boyette, and I look forward to, you, to speaking with you on our next webinar. Thank you. Great session. I hope everyone enjoyed it. We've got several questions that came up during this presentation. Um, which, you know, we're going to spend about 10, 15 minutes, uh, if that's okay with you, Randy. Absolutely. Great. So first question that we have here is, um, are there any tips for shooting YouTube video for patients? So when you are recording video of a patient, uh, say it's a testimonial or even before and after or some or some type of treatment, you want to make sure that you get a release uh, signed from them to make sure that you can use that video on your social media channels or anywhere else. Uh, so you want to make sure you take care of, of that paperwork first, and then uh, you can go ahead and upload to your YouTube channel at that point, as well as your social media channels. Thank you. Uh, what social media platform should I spend the most time on? So when it comes to aesthetics, uh, the ones that have generated the most business and the most traffic would still be Facebook and Instagram. Uh, they tend to have the highest income levels, uh, still the highest amount of people interested in aesthetic treatments. And believe it or not, Facebook still trends higher than Instagram uh, with that because of the income level. It is a little bit of an older audience, uh, but a lot of the aesthetic treatments fall within those age ranges. But Facebook and Instagram is where we recommend spending your time. Great. Um during this time, should I keep posting about my practice and offerings or be more informational on health and what's going on? So I would say the answer is both. So you want to keep talking about your services, keep talking about your practice, but with services and treatments and information that is relevant. So, you know, right now you're not going to want to say, uh, come in for your Botox treatment today if your practice is closed. So you may have some uh, posts that have been scheduled in the past and you want to make sure that everything that you're posting is relevant to what's happening today. But I still think that at this time, we should be educating people about your practice, not only just relevant to COVID-19 and what's going on in health tips, uh, as we recommended during the webinar, but also keeping people informed as to who you are, what services you provide, your, your role in, in the space and in the community. That's a great answer, Randy. Um, and the next question that I have kind of follows in suit with that is, you know, um, so if I'm still posting about my practice and what I can do, you know, we sell package, we sell uh, 
products and so forth, right? So what kind of discounting and promo should I be um, offering for the products that I can actually ship out? Sure. So right now, we want to get as much business in as possible. So everybody's doing some type of pricing promotions. I mean, even when you turn on the TV, uh, on the commercials between when you're watching the news, uh, even the largest retailers in the world are, are running promotions. So you want to maybe come up with some uh, package discount. So even if you're providing something that you can ship out like a, a supplement line or a skincare line, maybe you want to bundle package things so you're not exactly losing too much revenue or too much profit on there because you're maybe selling two or three items at once uh, and, and making it kind of like a buy one, get one half off, that kind of a thing. Uh, maybe offer free shipping items that would, would help them feel a little bit better about spending money in this time so it gives them some type of a discount without, you know, without it hitting your bottom line too much. Great. Um, now, I used to spend 15 to 20% of revenues on marketing. What should I be spending now, if at all? Sure. So right now, I, I've, I've been watching the trends and this, this circumstance is not something that, that I've experienced or any of us have experienced in the market. But from what I've been watching, uh, in, in each specific area, it will be unique. So in certain cities in this country, everything is shut down and you, you, there's nobody to do business anywhere. And then uh, in, in some areas, you can still go out and have treatments done. So keeping those factors in mind, uh, what I've been kind of hearing from the financial and, and marketing gurus is that you should be spending about 50% of your marketing overall marketing budget uh, and retaining that other 50% for when business returns to usual. However, if you have a product or service that is relevant to these times and, and something that people need in these times, then you could go all in with that specific item or treatment. What can I do to increase my Instagram followers? So our, our most, the recommendation that we most use when it comes to Instagram is to find people in your community. They call them influencers, uh, but some call them brand ambassadors. Uh, th but the quickest and easiest way to do this is to find people within your community that have a large following and somebody that's going to endorse your business. So you want to find somebody that Maybe, uh, so if we're in the aesthetics market, right? So we want to find someone who obviously looks the part and acts the part. So maybe somebody that uh, works out at a local gym and also receives treatments at your, at your practice. You maybe want to talk to them because maybe they are a fitness instructor at the local gym or maybe they're a personal trainer and they already have thousands of people following them and then they can give a shout out to your business. Uh, when they start doing that, and then tagging your business, that's the quickest way to get followers on social media, as well as posting engaging content, things that people want to see. Uh, people want to see videos. They want to watch what's going on. The before and afters have, have never been more popular. So using those influencers and people that can help you propel your business by connecting with their business and making sure that your content is exciting and engaging. So when you say, um, you know, using those influencers or, you know, the, the, um, the people that have a lot of followers, do you recommend that uh, the practice engages in some kind of partnership program with them so that that makes it much more attractive for them to want to uh, boost up uh, the Instagram uh, followers for the practice? Yes. So what, what you would want to do, a lot of practices work out some kind of a deal sometimes. So say uh, this person that may be a personal trainer at, at a local gym that has a lot of followers, you may want to say, hey, we'll give you a free treatment. And then they, then they happen to talk about that treatment. So you want to kind of do something that makes them want to help you. And it doesn't always have to be in the form of payment. It can be in a treatment or promoting each other or something that benefits both parties. Perfect. A um, couple of last questions. So one of them is a little bit more serious here. Um, it's, uh, you know, very 
relevant to this test of times. And, um, you know, it says, you know, I've laid off my, I've laid, I've laid off my staff. How can I get them to engage in training while I'm not paying them? Sure. So yes, this is uh, a difficult uh, situation across the country and, and people have been laid off. Um, well, we, in, in the landscape, I've been watching a lot of different versions of laid off from uh, fully laid off to then there's something called temporary layoff, then there's a furlough. So there's many different versions of that. I think if your employees know that they are coming back when better times are ahead, then that's a great way to keep them engaged uh, and, and let them know that, hey, we're, we're, we're trying to build you up to, and the company up so that when we come back, we're even stronger. And obviously, we can't uh, make them do these things at the time. But right now, people are sitting around with time on their hands. And if you position it to them that here's something that you may want to participate in so that when we come back, we're bigger and stronger than ever, I think that if you make it optional, but let them know that there are other team members on board taking advantage of some of the trainings and opportunities, uh, then I think that people will be more cooperative and looking forward to getting back to business, especially if they know that they're not laid off permanently. That's great. Uh, thank you very much for those ideas. Uh, final question, and I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of people asking this is, uh, you know, are there, any, are there any apps that you recommend for telehealth? And how do you recommend I get equipped with, you know, some kind of tele, uh, telemedicine or virtual consulting? Sure. So that is a question that we are getting all day, every day. Um, telehealth uh, is, is a great option at this time. So what I will say is that each state has different requirements. Um, there are not only federal requirements, but also on the state level of how to operate telehealth which services it's applicable for, and then the guidelines around that. So before I dive in a little deeper, you want to make sure that you check with your telehealth provider as well as your state medical board. That being said, um, I do, I have heard that there are some uh, guidelines that have been a little less stringent so that we can get telehealth out to patients and, and people that want to interact uh, without leaving their home and, and that they're making this a little bit easier. Uh, but I, we do work with a lot of telehealth uh, p practices. So I've heard of uh, Spruce, TouchMD, Zoom for Healthcare, one touch healthcare. So uh, there are some great lists out there and you can kind of check into which one is the best fit for you cost wise, state wise. And then once you get your telehealth up and running, um, the best thing to do is get the word out about it, not only to your existing patients, because maybe you do have, you know, a couple thousand patients or maybe just a thousand patients that you would send out that messaging to, but you can even let your local community know because not everybody is going to do telehealth. Maybe one out of a hundred medical practices will do that uh, or aesthetics practices. So you want to let your local market do that, uh, know that you are offering that service and, and we at Spark can help you get the word out through different forms of advertising. Uh, and we've had a lot of success with that. In fact, we helped one of the first telehealth apps it, it get off the ground seven years ago when telehealth was just getting off the ground. So we're very well versed in how to market that and how to get the word out to people. But now more than ever, people are looking for any type of solution that does not require them to leave the house. I think additionally, Randy, and maybe you know, uh, you'll, you'll comment on this too, but I think telehealth is a very good option, even if we're not in this uh, kind of uh, in a pandemic situation, because you may have, uh, you may have uh, people that uh, prospective patients that want to come and see you for a procedure, but they're not sure and they may not want to invest in the time of driving all the way over to the office, looking for parking, waiting in a waiting room. So, you know, telehealth could be another alternative solution for consultations, even during um, regular environment, the regular economic environment. Gina, I could not agree more. I think some of the trends that we are going to see in business and especially in aesthetics and what you were just talking about, I think that those, those 
things would have happened in the future, but I think it's going to push uh, that lever a little bit faster. And I couldn't agree more. And I think that we will, uh, when, when things re return to normal, we will be able to get more people in for consultations. We will be able to push the pedal forward quicker because we do live in what I like to call the Amazon generation where people don't want to leave the house. And if we can get them as much information as possible and do that consultation and then all they have to do is show up, um, they're going to be thrilled. So I completely agree that this is a great trend for the aesthetics industry overall. And that will be one positive thing that will come out of this. Perfect. Well, that's all we've got time for right now. Randy, thank you so much for uh, your time with us. And uh, I know you've got uh, Randy's uh, email addresses on the slide there. So she's happy to answer any questions you guys uh, might, might have. And uh, once again, thank you everybody for taking the time to join us today with uh, Randy Boyette from Spark Marketing. Thank you.